Planet Fitness is one of the largest gym franchises in the world, most famous for its viral commercials and its eye-catching yellow-purple color palette. But the franchise holds a dark secret that many never talk about, and despite being a gym, they may be actively contributing to worsening people's health for profit. Not just in the United States, but they are looking to expand their empire across the globe. But why is Planet Fitness so controversial, and why is it perhaps the most hated gym franchise in the fitness community? To understand to understand that, we have to go way back and see the buildup of how the franchise grew from just a single gym to over 2,000 locations across the globe. Back in 1992, brothers Mark and Michael Grondahl wanted to open up their own gym. And to start, they purchased a local Gold's Gym in New Hampshire, which was struggling financially. However, the recent college graduate pair wanted to increase the amount of active members, but due to their lacking experience in the field, they simply weren't able to manage. So they ended up closing the establishment shortly after. After, setting them up for a pretty rough start. But not long after, since they already had a lot of equipment from the previous gym, they opened up another one called Coastal Fitness while collaborating this whole deal with a guy named Chris Rondo, who would later become the Planet Fitness CEO. However, the name Planet Fitness wouldn't come about until 2002, when they purchased the name from another gym owner called Rich Burks, who had already been using the name since 1993. So, the Planet Fitness we all know today really began in 2002 and expanded rapidly through the use of catchy advertisements and reaching out to the average person instead of fitness enthusiasts. And this is where the Planet Fitness controversy begins. You see, after buying the Gold's Gym in 1992, the Grondahl brothers noticed something that scared customers away. Bodybuilders. <laughs> In their opinion, bodybuilders were just loud and obnoxious gym-goers who took steroids. And they were really bad for business, as a new gym-goer could come in, check out the gym, but leave without starting because they were intimidated by the other members. So a major part of their marketing for the Planet Fitness franchise was to actively shut out bodybuilders and anything associated with them, including stringy tank tops, water jugs, and most famously, grunting, which they even made an alarm for. Which has since become infamous in the fitness community, the Lunk Alarm. Now, the Lunk Alarm is simply an employee-controlled alarm system where anyone behind the desk can ring it if somebody is making a lot of noise or breaking the rules of Planet Fitness. But if having an alarm for anyone making noise in the gym isn't bad enough, there are countless videos on the internet showcasing scenarios where the alarm is being rang for silly reasons. Alright guys, I'm at Planet Fitness. Watch how ridiculous this is. Now, in recent times, many have used the Lunk Alarm as a means to make funny gym content, trying to see how easily one can set it off. However, while many Planet Fitness gyms have stopped using the alarm altogether, it definitely made one thing very clear. If you're strong and eager to train hard, Planet Fitness isn't for you. And with the gym actively removing standard lifting equipment like squat racks, free weight benches, and deadlift platforms, and putting in hundreds of different types of cardio machines, with their slogan being that they are judgment-free, it created an environment less suitable for hardcore gym bros and powerlifters, and more suitable for the average guy or even people who didn't want to train in the first place. And that's where their massive marketing scheme really begins. You see, for a gym to be able to function and make a profit, they need to have a lot of active members. But since gyms are usually pretty cramped, many will avoid going there simply because it can get too crowded, especially after 4 to 8 p.m. after many people are done with work. And that creates sort of a maximum limit on how many members you can realistically have. But by marketing their gym for people who don't really want to train, Planet Fitness found a massive loophole. Now, most gyms cost anywhere from $30 to $50 per month to attend, which is a fairly large expense if you are barely using it, which normally would cause many to simply cancel their memberships. However, by pricing themselves considerably lower than the competition at only 10 or more recently, $15 per month, and making the cancellation process itself pretty hefty with an added fee, the Grondahl brothers found that even people who didn't show up to the gym wouldn't bother to cancel their memberships. Which means they could take on a lot more members than other gym franchises and become more attractive by keeping their prices so low. But what they ended up becoming known for over the years isn't just the so-called open environment or the low prices. Yes, you are seeing things correctly, back in the day, and some places apparently still do it, Planet Fitness was serving their members pizza every Monday to apparently show their appreciation. Later, they also started doing Bagel Tuesdays, where they would give everyone bagels and donuts. Which, if you didn't get the memo, isn't a very gym thing to do. Considering most active Planet Fitness members were beginners and many of them wanted to achieve weight loss, 
Planet Fitness would actively keep them fat for longer, which would keep returning them revenue by offering deals like these. They also made a lot of smaller benefits for existing members, like the black card where you can bring a friend to train free of charge. And many people would even use their memberships simply to access the gym's wardrobes, their massage chairs, tanning beds, and spa areas. This made their profit margins pretty solid, and since half of the members weren't even showing up, they could just keep piling up and use their profits to buy other gyms in the area and keep expanding. Where up until today, they have more than 2,400 locations across the globe, with most of them spread throughout the United States. Their model of catering to inactive members, coupled with aggressive marketing, has allowed them to dominate the gym market, outperforming virtually every other gym franchise, including the world-famous Gold's Gym, where it all started. But this expansion has also come at a cost. Many critics argue that Planet Fitness's practices contribute to a watered-down fitness culture. By prioritizing profit over progress, they've created a gym that doesn't really challenge or inspire its members. For a company built on the promise of health and fitness without any judgment, the irony is hard to ignore, especially when you actively throw out members for being too strong or too fit, under the false pretense that they are intimidating other members and are hurtful for their judgment-free environment. At first glance, Planet Fitness seems like a win for the accessibility. It's cheap, it's approachable, and open for beginners, which is awesome, especially for those who are low on funds, who also tend to rank worse on health statistics. But when you dig deeper, the cracks begin to show. Many argue that the franchise exploits its members' inactivity, keeps them in a cycle of mediocrity, and prioritizes gimmicks over genuine results. It's not like they're going out of their way to showcase how well their members are doing, or even offering anything sensible for their health aside from the equipment itself. But but is it really as bad as people make it out to be? The debate about Planet Fitness also reflects a broader question about fitness culture. Like, should gyms prioritize accessibility and comfort, or should they challenge people to push their limits? Arguably, both of these are very important, and in today's landscape outside of the fitness industry, where obesity and lifestyle diseases run rampant, simply getting people active in the first place is a great starting point. And for that, I don't think Planet Fitness is doing too bad. But antagonizing a competitive gym environment and gym goers who tend to be some of the nicest and most supportive people in the gym is simply misleading and can at worst cause people to never want to exercise in the first place because of the negative outcomes associated with it. Now, you don't even have to train at a gym to optimize health outcomes. All you really need is your own body weight and maybe some additional loads to keep progressing with. But the gym environment and the wide range of equipment is part of what makes it fun. And the reason why many find it so enjoyable, seeing yourself improve visually, experiencing the strength increases, and simply feeling better after going. Planet Fitness's rise to dominance is a masterclass in marketing and business strategy, but it also raises important questions about the role of gyms in society. As they continue to expand globally, their impact on fitness culture will only grow. So are they truly helping people live healthier lives? Or are they simply profiting from the very thing they claim to combat? The answer may depend on who you ask, but one thing is definitely clear, Planet Fitness is probably the greatest gym business to ever work. Thank you guys so much for watching. Black Friday is just around the corner, and if you want to get some new training clothes and supplements, you can check out my two sponsors over at Gymshark and Rice, where you can use either BACK10 or simply code BACK at checkout for a discount on top of the already amazing discounts they offer. I really appreciate all your support so much, and if you have any topics you'd like me to cover, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to read through every single one. And I'll see you all next time.